Hello everyone. Welcome to Apache Scoop tutorial from talentorigin.com. In this video series, we'll learn about what is Scoop and how to use Scoop tool uh, for importing or exporting data uh, from relational database management system. Uh, let's dive into introduction of Apache Scoop. So, what is Apache Scoop? Scoop is a tool which is designed to transfer data between RDBMS and Hadoop. An RDBMS database uh, can be of anything like MySQL or Oracle or Teradata uh, or Postgre, etc. And from this RDBMS or relational database management systems, we can transfer data or we can export data to Hadoop. Not to, when you when we say Hadoop, we have different components in Hadoop to uh, use with like HDFS or Hive or HBase or there are many components in Hadoop. So Scoop can store data from RDBMS onto Hadoop. When I say Hadoop, it can store data into HDFS or Hive or HBase or even it can store uh, data into Accumulo. Source for Scoop can not only be a relational database management system, it can also uh, extract or import data into Hadoop from a mainframe system. Uh, input for Scoop can be an, either an RDBMS table or it can be a data set of mainframe. Okay. Whenever we use the Scoop, it runs a MapReduce job in the background, either for importing or exporting the data uh, uh, from or to RDBMS and Hadoop or between RDBMS and Hadoop. Scoop provides a parallel operations and a fault of a tolerance. As I said, or as I mentioned earlier, an input to Scoop can be either a database table or mainframe databases. Scoop will read a table uh, row by row and it will write the uh, content into HDFS. When I say HDFS, as I explained earlier, it can be of a hive table or a HDFS location, HBase or an Accumulo. A mainframe uh, for mainframe systems, Scoop will read records from each mainframe datasets uh, into HDFS or Hadoop. Output of this import process is set of all files uh, containing a copy of imported table or datasets. As Scoop works in parallel way or multiple mappers would be working uh, when we trigger a, a Scoop job, uh, multiple files will be created whenever it is writing data into HDFS. So source can be of one data set or a one table, but whenever the data is written into Hadoop or HDFS, there will be multiple files created in the target directory because Scoop runs in parallel, in a distributed way or in parallel uh, uh, approach. Uh, import process is performed in parallel, hence there will be multiple files created in the target directory. And output of Scoop can be of uh, a text file or it can be of binary file or it can be a sequence file or even it can be of parquet file. It, uh, it supports multiple data formats to write into Hadoop uh, or HDFS. Not only this, Scoop also allows you to validate the data whatever you have imported from your source. The, uh, the default validation which supports by Scoop is a row count validation, meaning whenever you specify or whenever you instruct Scoop to validate the data, of the job, whatever it has done, it will do the row count validation of the source and it also does the row count validation from the target and it will compare uh, the results and it will confirm whether the data has been or the, uh, or the migration or importing of the data from RDBMS to Hadoop is successful or not. So this is another uh, uh, useful uh, technique or useful uh, uh, feature which Scoop, uh, Scoop provides. Whenever we say uh, a validation, Scoop allows by default allows us to uh, do a row count validation. But if you have any custom validations to do, Scoop allows us to uh, uh, code for it. Scoop provides an API uh, using which we can write our own validations and we can use as part of Scoop uh, job. And uh, after applying transformations on imported data, the results can be exported back to relational databases as well. That means whenever we want to store the data or uh, store the data into relational databases, even that can be possible using Scoop. We can apply transformations on the fly and you either you can um, uh, import the data from RDBMS to uh, export the data from RDBMS to HDFS or import the data from uh, uh, HDFS to RDBMS. It, you can use any way. 
A scoop export process will uh, read a set of delimited files uh, from HDFS in parallel and pass them into records and insert the new records into the target table. And scoop provides mechanism to inspect the database we want to work with. Uh, suppose uh, you 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 don't know when uh, you have a, a connection URL for a, for your database and you don't know what are the databases or you want to validate what are what are the databases available or you want to uh, validate what are the tables are available in your database. Uh, then scoop provides a mechanism to just validate whether the uh, uh, list the tables or list the databases which are available in the uh, in that particular database or in that particular RDBMS system. So Scoop also provides certain things like to evaluate the functions or evaluate a query if you want to run uh, using Scoop Evaluate. Using Scoop Evaluate you can run any query and you can see the result of the query in the shell. It is something like a uh, SQL execution shell. Uh, uh, this feature is provided with the Scoop uh, command uh, with Scoop Eval. Uh. Let's see about Scoop versions. There are two major versions of Scoop available, which is Scoop, which is called as Scoop or simply Scoop One or Scoop Two. These are the two different uh, uh, two major versions of Scoop which are available currently. These both the versions have significant differences under the hood in the architecture, how they work with or how they interact with the RDBMS or how they store into the uh, Hadoop uh, or uh, how the service is provided. There is a vast difference between these two versions. Scoop 2 is still work in progress model and the design is subject to change in the future. Uh, as it is a work in progress model, uh, Scoop 2 is not completely stable and uh, for the production usage, it is suggested to use Scoop 1 version uh, instead of Scoop 2. Let's discuss about Scoop 1. Scoop 1, um, it requires a client side installation. Scoop 1 requires a client side installation and configuration. And Scoop 1 provides only a command line interfaces. Uh, Scoop 1 provides only CLI, which is command line interface, uh, to interact with Scoop. Uh, whenever a Scoop job is launched, it triggers only one mapper job, uh, which takes care of both a transportation as well as transformations. Both things will be performed by one single map job. Uh, map job. So this is the architecture of Scoop. Coming to Scoop 2. Scoop 2 can also be uh, called as Scoop as a service. The main uh, motto of this uh, Scoop 2 version is to provide Scoop as a service, uh, which means uh, Scoop installation and configuration will be maintained in the server side. And uh, the one more ma major uh, uh, improvement that can be seen with Scoop uh, 2 is it provides both UI as well as CLI. It provides a user interface for a web user interface and it also provides a, re uh, a command line interface. It also provides a REST API uh, for external integration uh, uh, with uh, Scoop. And uh, if you observe the architecture over here, uh, Scoop 2 has uh, two things, uh, two tasks running. One is a mapper task, other one is a reducer task. A mapper task uh, will take care of only the transportation of the data from a source system or an RDBMS and the transformation or reducer reduce task will take care of the transformations and finally the reduce task stores the data into HDFS or Hadoop. Let's see what exactly differs in Scoop 1 and Scoop 2 as a service. So if you want to connect to RDBMS, all the connectors are available in RDBMS for Scoop 1 whereas Scoop 2 doesn't support all the RDBMS connectors but rather we have to use a generic connectors uh, for connecting to the RDBMS. For example, if you want to connect to uh, Oracle database, uh, you can use a generic uh, connector such as uh, MySQL connector uh, and you can connect to the Oracle database or a Teradata database. Uh, but we have to bear in mind whenever we are using a different connector to connect to a database, uh, then there will be a uh, hit on the performance. And coming to the Kerberos security, Scoop 1 and Scoop 2 both will provide, uh, uh, both are providing Kerberos security. And uh, coming to the data transfer to Hive and HBase directly, uh, Scoop 1 directly supports uh, storing the data into Hive table or a HBase table, but rather uh, Scoop 2 won't support this uh, particular approach. Rather, it we have to use two uh, step approach. That is, write the data into HDFS first. From there, we have to write another job to load the data into Hive table or HBase table.
and uh, as explained in the architecture diagram uh, coming to the map reduce job uh, scoop one triggers only a single uh, map job a single scoop single job for uh, uh, both transportation and transformation and whereas a uh, scoop two will have two different uh, tasks or two different jobs which is a mapper job and the ta uh, reducer job mapper will take care of the transport and redu reducer will take care of a uh, transformation of the data in this video series on apache scoop tutorial we'll be working with scoop 1 as scoop 2 is still working progress model and there is a subject to change in the architecture on the way we interact with scoop 2 so we primarily focus on scoop 1 as of now once in the coming uh, videos i'll also take up scoop 2 as main uh, driver thanks for watching this video guys uh, keep learning and subscribe to the channel talent origin and uh, see you in the next video. Bye guys.